Hey, it's Scott from San Marcos Makes. Today we are cooking pork tenderloin wrapped in bacon. Wrap anything in bacon, it's gonna be good. Super simple, weeknight, anytime you want, wrapped pork tenderloin. All right, so those that are not familiar with a pork tenderloin, this is definitely one of the best meats if done correctly and very affordable. Um, most of the time when you buy a pork tenderloin, it's going to come in two pieces. Um, this one is two pieces, um, and for $8.30 for two pounds of meat, that's not bad modern day. The key with a pork tenderloin is you cannot overcook it. You're going to cook it whole normally, but you don't overcook it. So how you don't overcook it is you're going to want to make sure you have a meat thermometer. Very important when you're cooking this, you're gonna cook it, and then it will rest. Let's look at every step, but first, let's prep this tenderloin. So once you get it out of the package, we'll see most of the time this is in two pieces. We're gonna save one of these pieces. Wrap that one. So real quickly when you wanna prep it, there is some silver skin. Um, you may wanna take some of it off it's pretty thin on this. Um, kind of the same thing on the fat. If you want to take it off, take it off. Um, it's gonna, not that big of a deal to get it all off. But if you want to take some of it off, that's fine. If you have a lot of silver skin, I would definitely take it off. Just, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to cook. If one end is way thicker than the other end, you can tuck it but this is pretty equal other than right in here. So I'm probably not gonna tuck it, but I'll kinda, I might. So the first thing we wanna do after we get it all prepped, we wanna put a little salt, a little pepper on it. So I'll do that now. A little bit of pepper, a little bit of salt. Make sure you flip it over. As Emeril Lagasse would always say, nobody wants one-sided tasting food. So we'll salt and pepper both sides. The tenderloin is gonna shrink as it cooks. And if we wrap this bacon and we did not sear it, the bacon's gonna fall off. This will help with this. So all we're trying to do is get a crust on here. Heat your pan, put a little bit of oil. But with most things, if we're trying to brown it, we do not wanna put it in a cold pan. Let things come up to temperature. As you can see, it's just starting to smoke. That's perfect temperature. That's what we're after. We're gonna take our pork tenderloin and we're gonna sear it on all sides. Whoa. You should get a sizzle. That is what you're after. But we're gonna brown it on all sides. Let's do that now. So while the meat is searing, you wanna get your bacon wrap ready to go. Um, thick or thin, honestly, it won't matter. You're going to overlap it. So just start making you enough of the bacon to wrap the entire thing. So not a crazy, crazy amount of overlap, but just enough. Um, it's going to take about a pound of bacon. If you don't have a pound, you can spread it out a little bit more. But... And you also, you don't want to overlap too terribly much, especially if it's thick bacon. It will never get good and crisp. I mean, you are wrapping it, so it's never going to be like crispy morning bacon. But it'll get close. All right, so that is perfect size. So here's the reason you sear. See, this is the before, this is the after. They were the same size, so... Um, Good reason why. So we're gonna put this right dead center. So as you wrap this, wrap this, think about how you want the presentation to be. So for this piece of meat, this is my flattest section. So I want this on the bottom. It's gonna make when I wrap the bacon a whole lot easier. So the flat side or kind of the round side, you want that kind of dead center in the middle. And as we wrap, we want to wrap and keep this as tight as you can get it. So wrap one side, then the other. And you can alternate them 
and it will even make them tighter. Do one, then the other. One, and the other. One, whoop, that way, that way. <laughs> Gotta remember your rhythm. There we go. There. There. And our last piece, there and there. We'll kind of put that just like that. So this will be the cook side down first. So we can lock that in and with a kind of weave, it will help lock it in. All right, let's get this back in the cast iron that we were cooking with. If you timed it right, you had it seared, wrapped, pan is still warm. That's what we're after. One of the harder parts is getting this in your pan without coming unwrapped. So preheat your oven, which you hear mine going off. It's preheated 375. Get that preheated. All right, easiest way I have found to do this, because not only do we have to get it in there, we also have to flip it. So I'm gonna take my knife and get under it and a set of tongs. We're gonna set it in and turn it upside down. Now, if it mine just a little bit comes undone, try to reach in and grab it. Next thing we wanna do is we want to load this up with about two tablespoons of honey. So take good quality honey. I don't have any local, but this is still decent honey that I will use. About two tablespoons, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. Get this in the oven at a 375, 375 degree oven, and we'll let this cook. 375 degree oven, we're gonna let that cook for about 30 to 35 minutes. What we're trying to achieve with the thermometer, after about that time, and it, you know, more or less, be in that ballpark, all depending on the size, but we are trying to hit that 145 degree mark. That is safe temperature for pork. Now that will be on the pink side, but that is the safe temperature. If you are more comfortable going up to 150, 155, even 160, it is fine, but just know it will not be as moist. 145 is where I wanna pull it out and then I'm gonna let it rest. Our timer is, just went off about 35 minutes. So that is what she looks like. So, Every about uh, 10 minutes, I came in and kind of basted it, if you will. Um, kept going, kept going, kept going, kept going. Just rub the, the melted honey and the bacon fat, the pork fat all across there. Now, to make sure we are good on temperature, you're gonna find the biggest portion, um, of the biggest section. Because if the biggest section is done, we know the smallest section is done. So I am just going to insert it, trying to get it about halfway. And if we look at my thermometer, we see that it's already above 160. So we know we are good. We are gonna let this rest for five minutes before we start cutting it. Now, I wanna get it off out of this hot pan. So I'm gonna go immediately and take it to the cutting board. So our meat has rested about five minutes. Let's go ahead and cut into it and see what it looks like. It should be fairly easy if you have a sharp knife. Look at that. And mine did go a little over. The meat was a little thinner than I thought it was. But as you can see, look at that. Look at that. Look how juicy it is. Uh, now we gotta try it. Let's eat this thing. Before the family gets down to eat, good best part about cooking something is you get to try it. So, 
we're gonna give this a go before they get down here. Let's see how good it came out. That is perfect. It's still super flavorful and it tastes like meat. Yes, there's a little bit of honey that helps with the color, but this is definitely not sweet. It is absolutely what you want in pork. Bacon crisp up enough. Get to eat that by itself. Really, really great job. I think you will enjoy it. Well, thanks for watching this video. And remember, beans don't go in chili, okra don't go in gumbo, and it's fine to put pineapple on pizza. Thanks for watching.